A very good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime News on TV1. We're coming to you live and direct from the News First studios here in Colombo. Let's first start off with a look at the stories that made it to your headlines this afternoon. The debate on the interim report compiled by the Steering Committee of the Constitutional Council begins. Four people dead and 41 injured due to accidents reported in the past 24 hours. 31 suspects arrested for violation of court orders after the Hamantara protest further remanded. Now in your lead story this afternoon, the Constitutional Council is set to convene today, commencing debates on the interim report. The debate will conclude on the 1st of next month. Now moving on to some more tragic news from here at home. It has been a deadly 24 hours on the roads as accidents reported around the island have claimed many lives and injured scores. Two individuals were killed while 13 others sustained injuries following an accident that took place after a van collided head-on with a train travelling from Gaul to Colombo. The injured have been admitted to the Balapetia Hospital. <laughs> In another accident that occurred along the A9 road at the Aushadapitiya junction in Irettaperia Kulam, Vaunia, an army jeep travelling from Vaunia to Anuradhapura attempted to overtake a motorbike. A correspondent said that the motorcyclist who sustained serious injuries in the accident was taken to hospital by the army personnel travelling in the jeep. The victim of the accident was a resident of Pugudugama, Aushadapitiya. Twenty women were injured in an accident that occurred in Pani Kanilavi, Vaunia. According to police, a private bus had collided with a water bowser. The private bus was transporting employees of a garment factory. The injured have been admitted to the Vaunia hospital. A three-wheeler which was travelling from Haliala to Badulla had veered off the road, injuring four. The injured have been admitted to the Badulla General Hospital. According to police, the three-wheeler had slipped as a result of heavy rains experienced in the area. An accident occurred at the Godagama entry of the Southern Expressway. Two children, a woman and the driver of the vehicle had been admitted to the Mathura General Hospital. The accident was a result of the driver falling asleep at the wheel. Hospital officials said the injured are not in serious condition. Now speaking at the Constitutional Council that convened today, Leader of the House, Minister of Highways and Higher Education, Lakshman Kiriala expressed the following views. <laughs> The proposed bill is not the final draft. These are only proposals given by all parties. The Constitutional Council can make amendments taking these proposals into consideration. Some have made a mistake of thinking this is the final draft. This will come under further amendments following the recommendations of the Constitutional Council. A protest by the joint opposition is causing heavy traffic in and around the parliament roundabout in Bataramulla. The police report that motorists have been advised to use alternate routes. Security has been beefed up at the entry point to parliament and the roads around the legislature. The protest by the joint opposition is against the proposed constitution. The 31 suspects who were arrested over five charges, including the protest violating court orders, have been further remanded until the 13th of next month. The order was issued by the Hambantara District Magistrate Manjula Karuna Ratna. The 31 suspects, including MP Prasanna Ranavira, Provincial Councillor Upali Kodikara, have been remanded. One of the suspects, however, was granted bail.
Now, still in local news, Minister of Health Dr. Rajita Sena Ratna has announced that a one rupee tax will be imposed on a gram of sugar once it exceeds the six gram mark. The aim of this tax is to reduce the consumption of sugar in the country. Minister Senaratna added that this initiative has already received approval from the World Health Organization. Previously, a traffic light color coding system was introduced to indicate the level of sugar contained in all soft drinks. The minister made this statement at an award ceremony where he awarded more than 1,400 diplomas for nurses. Scores of fish have reportedly been found dead in the Parakrama Reservoir in Polo Narwa. Now, this was reported by area residents because of the bad odor in the area. News first inquired into the matter from the officer in charge of the Aquaculture Centre in Polo Narua. This occurs in most of the reservoirs situated in the dry zone, especially during the dry season. The water level decreases in certain algae grows and the algae is consumed by the fish. This is not any cause for alarm. We have already examined the situation. It is based on the situation that arose in Anuradhapura. News First has learned of the decline in the number of pupils attending one of the country's oldest Buddhist schools. In 1969, Sri Dhamma Piyaratana Mahavidyalaya in Dodamgoda became the country's first ever Buddhist school. Henry Steele Olcott, Hik Kadue Sri Sumangala Thera, S. Mahinda Thera, Migetu Vatte Gunananda Thera, Anagaharika Dharmapala were some of the greatest figures of history who have worked towards the establishment of the school. Around 150 students are currently receiving education compared to the 2,000 students who were at the college following its inception. A suspect who fled while in custody of the wildlife authorities in Hambantota has been taken back into remand custody yesterday. The wildlife authorities of Hambantota arrested the suspect on the 28th of this month on charges of possessing a form of explosive. He was handcuffed by to a table at the wildlife office. The suspect had escaped at dawn on the 28th this month after getting rid of the handcuffs. He was rearrested by the officers after he was found sleeping at his residence yesterday. The suspect was ordered to be further remanded until the 2nd of November when he was produced before the Hambantota District Magistrate Manjula Karunaratna. The 45th anniversary of the Muslim Ladies Study Circle was held in Colombo yesterday. In 1970, the Muslim Lady Study Circle started in a humble way at 106 Pedler Street, Fort Gore. Six young girls, fresh from school, Sacred Heart Convent, banded themselves together and called themselves the Muslim Lady Study Circle. Their vision was to reach out to underprivileged sections of society irrespective of caste or creed. Our activities include responding to national crises, assisting assistance to the community in times of natural and man-made disasters, providing housing to the homeless, and empowering women by equipping them with marketable skills at our vocational training center. In addition, we have trained abused women referred to us by the Child Care and Probation Institute at our vocational training center in Panadura. Thanks to the facilities provided, provided at our vocational training center, which is open to all communities, school dropouts, widows, and abused or traumatized women have been able to redeem themselves by acquiring basic skills. These ladies can now stand up with dignity and contribute to the society themselves. 